How do we know whether a given sin, cos or any other trigonometric ratio is positive or negative? This is what we learn in this video. This is our unit circle. Let's build this up. Okay. Any point on the unit circle will give us cos and sin of the angle that this line makes with the positive axis. So if we know where the point is, we can figure out whether its coordinates are positive or negative, which means we can figure out whether the signs of cos and sine are positive or negative. This is the basic concept that we'll use to figure out the signs of all trigonometric ratios. Let's do that. But before we go ahead, let's mark the axis. This is our positive x axis. This is our positive x axis. This is negative x. This is positive y and this is negative y. All right. So let's look at cos first. Cos comes from the x coordinates. Where on this map do we have points which have x coordinates as positive? Think about it. It's this region is the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Pick any point in these two quadrants and you'll get the x coordinate as positive. So this means this region has cos positive. Now let's look at sine. Where on this map do we have sine positive? Okay, sine comes from the y axis because it's the y coordinate. Where do we have points with positive y coordinates? It's these two quadrants is the first one and the second one. In these two quadrants, we'll have sine positive. So we have sine positive and we have cos positive. What about other ratios? Let's talk about their reciprocals. If this is the region where cos is positive, this is also the region where sec is positive because the reciprocal of a positive number is also positive and sec is just the reciprocal of cos. We can say that if this works for cos, this also works for sec using the same logic. If this works for sine, this also works for cosec. In the first and second quadrant, both sine and cosec are positive. We're left with tan and cot. Pause the video. Think about it. Where is tan and cot positive? Okay, let's do this together. Tan is sine by cos, so we need both sine and cos. So this is where sine is positive and this is where cos is positive. Tan is sine by cos. To make tan positive, either we'll have a positive by positive. This will make it positive or we can have negative by negative. This will also make it positive. So where do we have both sine and cos positive? That's the first quadrant. So this is where tan is positive, but there's one more quadrant, the one where sine and cos are both negative. In this third quadrant, both sine and cos are negative and negative by negative is positive. This means it's good for tan. So in this quadrant, tan is positive. So we have two quadrants for sine, first and second. We have two quadrants for cos, first and fourth. And we have two quadrants for tan, first and third. Let's summarize. This is for sine, this is for cos, this is for tan, and this is for all of them. In this first quadrant, every single ratio is positive. And this also works for reciprocals, sine, cos, tan, but also cosec, sec, and cot. Now let's practice. Figure out the signs of these six ratios, sine, cos, tan, cosec, cosec, and cot. Pause the video, try this on your own. All right, let's do this together. We have our unit circle. Second quadrant is where sine is positive. Fourth is where cos is positive. Third is where tan is positive. And first is where all four of them are positive. To get the signs, we need to figure out where these points are on this unit circle. Let's figure out their quadrants first. Minus pi by three is minus 60. This means we're moving in the clockwise direction. 60 degrees is less than 90, which means we're still in the fourth quadrant. So this is Q4. This one is in quadrant four. What about two pi by three? Two pi by three is twice of 60. That's 120. This is in the second quadrant. What about 15 pi by four? Well, this needs some calculation. So let's make space for rough work. 15 pi by four. Let's find the nearest multiple of pi or two pi. We are dividing by four. So nearest multiple of four is 16. 16 minus one, we can write 15 as 16 minus one. So this is 16 minus one pi by four. That's four pi minus pi by four. So 15 pi by four is slightly less than four pi. Four pi is here. 
So 4 pi minus pi by 4 is in the fourth quadrant. So this is Q4. What about 25 pi by 7? So dividing 25 by 7 is 21 plus 4. That's how we can split it. 21 plus 4. So this will give us 3 pi plus 4 pi by 7. So this is pi, 2 pi and 3 pi. 3 pi plus 4 pi by 7. Is this third quadrant or fourth? Well, to figure this out, we need to look at 4 pi by 7. 4 pi by 7 is slightly more than pi by 2. That's slightly more than half. So this means it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. So this also lies in the fourth quadrant. What about 8.3 pi? Well, this is 2, 4, 6 and 8 pi. If we add 0.3, we're in the first quadrant. So this is Q1. And last, 101.01 pi. So this is 101 plus some change. 101 is an odd multiple of pi. Odd multiple is here. So this is pi, 3 pi, 5 pi and so on. 100 pi is here, 101 pi is here. And we add 0 0.01, which is hardly anything, but it moves us in this third quadrant. So this one is in Q3. All right, so now we have the quadrants and we know the signs of these ratios in these quadrants. Let's wrap this up. Sine in quadrant four, that's negative. Cos in quadrant two, that's negative. Tan in quadrant four, that's also negative. Cosec in quadrant four, that's also negative. All these are negative. Cosec in quadrant one, well, anything in quadrant one is positive, so this is positive. Tan and cot in quadrant three are positive, so this is also positive. So this is how we figure out the signs of trigonometric ratios using these quadrants.